the children of the goddess have been defeated at last. The shape of the world will be forever changed. Humanity is free now. The world is ours once again. Can you believe it? True, there is still much to be done. We can't ignore the possibility that our enemies will resurface one day. In the end, the fate of this world depends on the choices we make. I don't know what the future holds, but come what may, will you stay by my side? You chose to protect me at the Holy Tomb. Will you choose me again? What I'm trying to say is, I need you. You called me L. That's... I... That means more than I can say. And this ring... It's lovely. Thank you, my dearest friend. I will happily accept it. I must admit, I feared my feelings would be unrequited. So long as I had you by my side, it never mattered how many enemies I amassed. You were all I needed. All this time, I longed to share my feelings with you. And it seems you wished for the same. Now, our wishes have come true. This feeling, it's overwhelming. I promise the same. Together we can achieve anything. We will crush those who slither in the dark and restore peace and order to Fodlan. I will then find a suitable successor and hand over the reins of the Empire. When all that is done, it will be just the two of us. I look forward to starting our life together in the light of a glorious new dawn. Yes, that is all we can do for now. We must remain focused on our goals. To think that I may truly call you my partner and equal now. The solitary reign of Edelgard has come to an end. From now on, we walk this path together. With time and care, the darkness shrouding this world will be lifted. You and I will become the light that shines over Fodlan, just as you have shined upon my life. Come now, my friend. You must stop staying up so late. Tomorrow is yet another early morning. Then again, I know that matters little. You cannot sleep, can you? <laughs> Neither can I, of course. I... I want you to know I am sorry for making you do so much when your battle wounds aren't even completely healed yet. Do not worry about me. My shoulder has healed nicely. I still have some numbness in my hand, but it should not hinder me too much. It is a lovely night, is it not? How many years has it been since I was kept awake by hopes for the future, rather than by nightmares of the past? I have had the same nightmare for nine long years. A nightmare in which I am constantly tormented by those who... They ask me why I have not avenged them. Why I got to live, yet they had to die. No matter how many corpses I piled up for them, in the end, their voices only grew louder. Voices loathing me, calling out to me. Their inescapable death cries ringing in my ear, soul. Even now, I can always hear them. I am certain I will be hearing them until the day I die. But I will not cover my ears. I will go on living, and their voices will serve as a warning. As a king, and as a wretch who claimed countless lives. I will build a kingdom where the people can live in peace. I am sure she would laugh and call such talk foolish. But I wish to change this world in my own way. Well, your grace, things will be busy from now on. Our first order of business is tomorrow's coronation. Once a professor and student, now an archbishop and a king. How very far we have come. That is true. To me, you will always be the one who guided me so kindly. 
My ally through all. My beloved... Yes. My beloved. Listen. There is something I wish to give you before the coronation. Give me your hand. Please, I beg of you, say something. If you do not wish to accept it, please, just tell me. If so, I will face the truth and walk away. What is this? Yes, I see. Right. In that case, let us exchange them, shall we? Your hands. Now that I hold them within my own, I see how small and fragile they are. These hands that have saved me countless times. Thank you, my beloved. Your kind, warm hands. May they cling to my own forevermore. Sorry for calling you out here like this. I wanted to talk, just the two of us. First of all, I wanted to say thank you for all your hard work. It seems like our long struggle may finally be coming to an end. The way forward will certainly be rough. Right now, Fodlin is like a newborn, frail and easily upset. If we don't create a new ruling system soon, the Empire and Kingdom will descend into chaos. The coronation ceremony is the first step. Only then will Fodlin truly be a single, united land. I'm sorry that I won't be by your side at such an important event, but I'm certain you'll do great. I must return to my homeland. As for ruling this new, unified land, well, I'll leave that to you. The Fodlin blood that flows in my veins I've made use of it as best I could. Now I've got to use my other bloodline to change my homeland for the better. I have royal connections there too, insignificant as they may be. It's time for me to struggle all over again and see what good I can do. If I don't change things in both Fodlin and the lands beyond, I'll never set eyes on the kind of world I've dreamed of creating. You're the successor Rhea appointed, aren't you? And now you're also the hero who saved Fodlin. All those weak people who have nothing to cling to but their goddess, they'll rely on you just like they used to rely on Rhea. You'll be a leader all who are struggling to survive in war-torn lands can look up to. And I... I want a ruler who can lay down a new set of values for the people. Values that don't exclude anyone for being different. I know it's a lot to ask. But you're the only one who can do it. I have something else to ask. Please, I hope you'll accept this. When I first saw you wield the sword of the Creator, I wanted to use your power to my advantage. I wanted to use you to make my dream of a new world come true. But before long, I realized what I really wanted was to see that new world with you by my side. I still feel that way, you know? I always will. That's why I have to leave. But nothing will stop me from coming back. There's no way I'm gonna let you go. You know that, don't you? Thank you. For everything. I'll be back before you know it. We'll only be apart for a short while. And now, I'm off to cross Fodlin's throat. I love you. With everything I am. And the next time we see each other, it will be at the dawn of a whole new world. A peaceful, happy world. You've kept me waiting. Where have you been? The war may be over, but matters of government, diplomacy, and justice remain to be dealt with. There is one problem in particular that must be sorted first, however. You. 
Rather, you and me. <laughs> to think I had rehearsed a long preamble. Now when it matters, it's all vanished from memory as suddenly as the morning dew. To the point, then. I... love you. In fact, I wish to marry you. I know this must come as a surprise. Especially in light of my devotion to Lady Edelgard. I've already spoken to Her Majesty about this. She told me to follow my heart. She seems to prefer that you be with me rather than some dubious individual. So you could say that we have her blessing. Is that... a ring? You came here with the same idea. I cannot believe I am saying this. I am truly happy. I am afraid you've outdone me. I've brought no such token. <laughs> Not much of a suitor, am I? I've never done well with gifts or flattery. Protecting you is easy, but to be a good husband... <sighs> of course such a thing doesn't bother you. I hope I can support you with the same tenacity. Thank you for doing me this honor. <laughs> I once thought killing you would be a great challenge, but the real difficulty was declaring my love. It has been a long, hard road. Would you agree? Every long road comes to an end. That is when friends who have walked together must go their separate ways. You will guide Fodlin. I will return to my rightful position as Duke Iyer. Life will go on. It must. I once asked something of you. I asked you to bear witness to my achievements. But even if I achieve nothing, and there is nothing left of me after I am gone, I still want you to see me. I mean, that I want you to be my wife. I need you as much as I need my next breath. More, perhaps. I hope that you need me, too. That is it? You hear noble Ferdinand von Eyre declare his love for you, and all you say is, I understand? This is torture. Please, if you are going to refuse my proposal, simply tell me. I am not sure I understand. You do? Does that mean... Really? Oh, my head is ringing with pure joy, like a thousand bells. It is even greater than the joy of victory in battle. It is victory in life itself. <laughs> uh, apologies. I got a little carried away there. I am shaking. <laughs> I cannot control it. It would be no exaggeration to say that my whole life, everything I have done, has led me to this moment. I am overjoyed. <laughs> oh dear, I might faint. Give me a minute or two to regain my balance before you say anything too fantastic. Imagine making our way through life side by side. The whole world has taken on a rosy hue. Ah, it is no use. I cannot stay upright. Please, let me lean on your shoulder. That is better. We are as close as can be. From now on, we will lean on each other. Thank you, my love. Professor, I've been waiting for you. Oh, is it noticeable? I imagine we've spent so much time together that you understand everything about me by now. The truth is, 
I want to ask you a once-in-a-lifetime question. Um, yes. I know that the end of the war hasn't granted you limitless free time, but you must have more time on your hands than you did during the war, yes? Would you spend that time with me? I want to know more about you. I want to solve the mysteries that surround you. I don't think I'll ever meet anyone more intoxicating than yourself. I want you to be mine, and I want to be yours. Here is proof of my desire. Will you accept it? Oh, thank goodness. I don't know what I would have done with myself had you turned me down. Though, I feel like I've come to understand rather a lot about you. So I didn't honestly think you'd reject me. Oh, just wait. I will understand you even more. Our future together has only just begun. Before I become bored of this business, I wish to learn all there is about your crest and your strength. And perhaps we'll even come up with ways I could help you guide Fodlan. I as a crest scholar and you as a leader of Fodlan. We will take our first steps together into this new world, the two of us working as one. Once things settle down, we can retire to the countryside. A place where the air is fresh, the lakes are full of fish, the sun is warm, and where we may nap deeply. Without naps, life is nothing but work. I value you too much to let you spend your whole life laboring for others. You're the hero of Fodlan, after all. Besides, naps are the entire point of retirement. It may be some time until we can nap beneath a tree, peaceful sunlight filtering through the branches. But when that day comes, to have you there lying by my side, paradise, and we will have made it so. Yes, we did it! Huh? Oh! Professor, um, what are you doing here? Don't you have a lot of important stuff to do? Unlike me, who obviously has a little too much free time, as you can see. You can't stay away. What's that supposed to mean? Well, I know I can be a little reckless, but I don't need a babysitter. Oh, do you mean that you snuck out here because you wanted to see me? We can go train if you want. The training ground isn't too far, and... You... what? I don't... I don't really know what to say. I guess I never thought about marriage. I mean, I never really had a reason to. Uh, boy, uh, now, now I'm babbling. <laughs> I always secretly hoped I could spend my life with you, but this is so unexpected. Well, come on, you can't just spring something like this on me. Now I'm flustered, and I can't think of the right thing to say. I'm just... so happy. And I can't stop grinning. I bet I look like a real fool right now. <laughs> I knew it! I do have a silly grin on my face. Alright, now that I've pulled myself together, I want to tell you the same thing you told me. I love you, and I want to marry you. Listen, I know I can be reckless, stubborn, and generally difficult to be around at times, but you once said you'd accept me, even with all of my flaws. When you said that, I made a promise to myself. I promised that I'd always protect you, and, well, sometimes you might have to protect me from myself, but I intend to keep my promise. Well, let's see it. I shouldn't be the only one who has to look so ridiculous. Whew, okay. I gotta let all these emotions out. I know. You should shout with me. Ready? I love you forever! 
Oh, come on! You didn't do it! Oh, is this where you've been? Everyone's looking for you. With the war over, I'd like to think they'd at least give you a few days rest. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't tell them you're here. It's a rare occasion for me to have you all to myself. No, I've given up on that. I realized there was no point. Besides, maybe the person I've been looking for is closer than I realized. What? Is that... That's a ring. It would be very embarrassing if I had the wrong idea, so... I have to ask. Are you proposing? Here? Now? To, to me? I don't know what to say. Are you sure? You want to spend your life with me? Even though I'm not a songstress anymore, and I don't come from a noble family or have any wealth or land to my name? You won the war. You could pick anyone in the world. Why would you? Okay. I mean, yes. Yes, I love you madly, and I'd be happy to marry you. But if we're going to be married, I had better think up a cute nickname for you. Don't you think? <laughs> oh, I wonder what I should call you now. Darling, my beloved. <laughs> so many options. I starred in so many operas where I captured the heart of my beloved. But I never dreamed that it would feel this wonderful when it actually happened. A life singing for you in a peaceful world. I imagine that life will be more wonderful than I ever could have hoped. I love you. I could never sing anything as pure as those three little words. I finally found you. It is a fine night. The stars seem closer than usual. Just like last time. I needed to speak with you. Yes. When I left the capital, I told His Majesty that I would be leaving his service. He accepted my decision with a smile. I do not think I have fully accepted it myself yet, to be honest. It was all so that I could give you this. I have come to ask for your hand in marriage. I adore you. I understand that, as the new Archbishop, you cannot take marriage lightly. But even in the face of rejection, I cannot leave these words unspoken. May I have your answer? You do? You... will marry me? I am not good with words. Would you really have me, uninteresting as I am? <laughs> Strange, but flattering. Why are you making that face? Is it so odd to see me laugh? I see. Well then. I have one more request. I know it is sudden, but will you prepare to depart on a journey? I told you once before that I would like to show you the fields of Dusker and Bloom. I know that you cannot leave the monastery for long due to your position, but... <sighs> I am excited also, to show you the flowers as they are meant to be seen, in my homeland, and to be by your side in all the days to come. Yes, it is a fine night indeed.
finally, you came. Wars begin and end, but this place never changes. And you don't change either. <laughs> if there's been any change, it's just that you're so busy, your sword has grown dull. We fought to bring peace to Foblin, but peace is so boring. No more chances to swing my sword at enemies, no more life-threatening battles. I know that these are positive developments, but I'm still a warrior at heart. Here I am, watching sadly as my blade grows dull. You do? That's a relief. We're cut from the same cloth, you and I. And on that note, I'll tell you why I asked you to come here. Take this. Without a worthy opponent like you at my side, not only will my sword grow dull, it'll rust. So I had to think of a way to make sure you'd always be with me. This is what I came up with. And... You're pretty slow on the uptake. Don't you know what this ring means? If you keep messing around, I'll... I'll... Fine. Listen carefully. I'm not going to say this more than once. I want you to be my wife. Please say yes. Let's get married and stay together until we die. I love you. That's all. What? You have something to complain about? Oh. Okay then. In that case, I'd better start planning for the future. My future. With you. Professor, so this is where you went off to. You've been working so hard. You deserve a break. Is there any way I can lighten the load? Maybe, but I'm sure there's more I could do. You need all the rest you can get. It's only going to get more hectic from here. Even I'm tired and I haven't done nearly as much. It's been a long struggle. Yeah? So many people have died. And far too many of them were civilians. But with the state we're in now, it might actually be the survivors who have it the hardest. I want to help them, like Lenato helped me. And now that I'm a knight, I feel like I actually can. Definitely. When I'm by your side, I'm full of hope for the future. And on that note, there's something I've been meaning to give you. I want to be with you for the rest of my life. I want to be there for every important moment, every smile, every hardship. I know I'm just a commoner and nothing special. I, I know I don't have a crest or a prestigious family legacy, and I've done things I'm not proud of. But if you'd be willing to look past all that, I, I also know we'd be great together. Yes, sorry, I, I'm... I'm struggling for the right words. It's funny, I, I've rehearsed this so many times. <laughs> but when the moment actually came, it, it all just ran right out of my head. What I mean to say is, I love you, and I want to marry you. You have a ring for me too? Am I dreaming? <laughs> you really feel the same way about me. Sorry, I'm kind of giddy. This doesn't feel real. To go from a life of stealing on the streets to marrying a wonderful person like you. Am I even allowed to be this happy? I'm worried it could all come crashing down at any moment. Even so, 
As long as we're together, I think I can handle just about anything. I'm looking forward to our future. I know I have my shortcomings, but I promise you, I'll do everything I can to make you happy. Professor, I've been waiting for you a while. I've just been out here watching the sky grow lighter. No, it's okay. I just got here way too early. It's really just hitting me. For the past five years, we've been fighting and fighting. But now the war's over. It's time for a new way of life. So, I've decided I want to take responsibility for my own fate. That's right. My crest doesn't decide my fate. I do. It's time for the first step in the right direction. I don't want to marry a girl who wants to use me for my crest. Or a girl who someone else chose for me. I want to marry someone I really care about. And, you know, maybe I can't. But I'd like to try. You don't believe me? I probably should have seen that coming. In that case, I'll just have to propose to you over and over again until you know I'm serious. Marry me. I'd do anything for you. I'm done lying, especially to myself. You mean... If we're together, I don't even care if I stay locked up inside for the rest of my life. If you told me you didn't want me to look at another woman, I'd go blind for you. Sorry about that. I got a little excited. I've spent my whole life relying on flowery language, so it's a bit hard to rein it in. Okay, calming down now. I'm just over the moon about this. With you by my side, I'm excited to find out what this new way of life is all about. We fought hard for today, and I'm beyond happy just to be alive. And now, I'm engaged to the perfect woman. Strike that. You know what? My happiness isn't what I care about today. I'm going to spend the rest of our lives together trying to make you happy. I promise. There you are. I apologize for the short notice, but I'm so glad you could make it. I'm sure you're very busy being the hero of Fodlin and all. What a relief. I have to ask you something, but I'd hate to inconvenience you. Do you mind hearing me out? Ah, great. Here it is. I'm going to Furdia to meet with my adoptive father, and I'd like you to accompany me. proper closure. I'm going to tell him face to face that this is farewell. I've already decided exactly what I'm going to say. I'm choosing to live my life how I want, in pursuit of my own happiness. I need you to accept that. I'm in charge of my own destiny, not you, not anyone else, just me. Ah, <sighs> I've waited so long to say all that. It's a very good question. Where do I start? Remember when I teased that I'd fallen for you? The truth is, that wasn't entirely in jest. I fell for you some time ago. In fact, I'd very much like to spend my life with you. Of course, that's only if you'll have me. happiest I've ever been. I'm so glad I could finally express my feelings. 
Now we can live the rest of our lives together. To think, I was able to choose this path of my own volition, and now I get to walk it with you. <laughs> Should one person be allowed this much happiness? But still, you're only given one life. Are you sure you want to spend it with me? I may be quite demanding at times, as I intend on pursuing my dreams. I want to help those in need, wherever they may be, and I won't give up on that. I thought that's what you might say. Perhaps that's why I fell for you. It's just the way you are. Alright, let's be off. It's no short journey to Ferdiad. Oh, something to note. You should know that I can be quite scatterbrained and clumsy, but I will do everything in my power to help and support you too, whatever you may need. What a wonderful life we will lead together. You actually came. I wasn't sure you'd find the time. You often asked me to meet with you, but this is the first time it has been the other way around. I know I gave you something of a headache. Please forgive my youthful impropriety. Now that the war is finally over, it seems I am able to resume my search for a suitable wife. Just one. Pedigree and status are no longer priorities for me. I now know that what matters most is the worth of an individual's soul. And there is only one person who calls to my heart, one whose incredible qualities outshine all others. That person is you. You'd expected this all along? I am I that predictable? <sighs> I'd hope to surprise you. I cannot believe I've made such a terrible blunder. Even so, surely you have some reply beyond that. No, I should apologize. I've gone and made you flustered. How abominably rude. Please don't fret about it. I'm no longer the type of person to get upset over others' manners. Do you remember when I said you were charismatic? By that time, I had already become unable to imagine anyone but you as my partner. But I did not feel I was your equal. Since then, I have worked tirelessly to improve, to become a man truly worthy of you. What do you think? Have I finally managed it? <sighs> I'm so glad. To hear you say that makes all the effort worth it. In that case, please hear my humble proposal. I want nothing more than to be yours, now and for all time. Will you do me this great honor? You will? You do? Yes, of, of course this should happen. Not even if you scoured all Fodlin could you find a partner more worthy of you. Or my name isn't Lawrence Hellman Gloucester. <laughs> <clears throat> In any case, I swear to do my utmost to make you happy. And together we will make this world a better place. Oh, Professor, are you sure it's okay for you to be here? You're probably right. Even you need a break every once in a while. The war's finally over, but they're still putting you to work, huh? I bet you it's gonna get pretty busy from here on out. Fodlin sure has changed a lot since you were our professor. Some places lost their leaders, and other ones got wrecked from all the fighting. You gotta decide what to do about the church now, too, huh? <laughs> Even I understand that much. I'd never become a great knight if I didn't. You bet I do! That's what I've been working toward all this time. 
I'm not sure you heard, but apparently the battles I fought in made me famous. Folks started calling me the Beast of Lester. Can you believe that? People calling me a beast. I was offended at first, but my little sis said it made me sound tough. She must be right, because I've had people asking me to work for them nonstop. I've made my decision, though. I know whose knight I want to be. Speaking of, I got this for you. Will you accept it? M m m m Marry me, and let me be your knight, please. Remember when I told you how important you are to me? Well, I want to be with you, and stay by your side. I thought maybe if we got married, then we could always be together. It's awfully nice of you to worry about her, but she'll be fine. I barely took my eye off her, and she grew up into an adult. It won't be easy, but I want her to do whatever's going to make her happy. I'll still keep an eye on her, but she'll be off on her own soon. I guess what I'm saying is, don't worry about her. She'll be okay. I'm more worried about you. You gotta rebuild this world from scratch. That's a whole lot of weight for one person to carry. Enough to crush you. So, will you let me help you? It's a heavy load, but I want to carry it with you. What do you say? Will you let me be your knight? You... love me? <laughs> yes! Yes, yes, yes! From now on and for the rest of forever, this beast is gonna stay by your side. But wait, I can't just be a physically strong beast. I gotta have a strong mind, too. Whatever you need, I'll work as hard as I can. As hard as anyone. I'll keep training to make sure you can count on me. And I'll love you forever and ever and ever. I don't believe it. The painting I gave you. It was meant for you and you alone. You weren't supposed to show it to anyone, but you hung it in the reception hall. Because of all that you've done, now everyone knows, including my father. He's heard so much praise that he and my brother want to see it. He even told me that I should be an artist. That I'm more likely to succeed as an artist than a knight. Yes. I've dreamed of being an artist for so long, I stopped believing it would actually happen. You know, for that painting, I thought of the most beautiful thing in the world. Well, yes, it was a portrait of Sothis, the goddess who descended from heaven to guide humanity. But when I was painting her, I couldn't stop thinking of you. You are the most beautiful thing in the world. And beyond that, okay, here goes nothing. I want you to please accept this. Please. Do you accept? I can't measure up to you. You're the hero of Fodlin, and I'm just a painter. But I can't lie to myself any longer. I can't live my whole life denying myself what makes me the happiest. You taught me that. Taught me to see myself. You taught me everything. You've always been so patient and attentive. You never made me feel small or denied my feelings. You soothed my troubled soul. You are my goddess. I want to be with you for the rest of my life. To love you for all eternity. I want to paint your beauty in portrait after portrait. I want to stay by your side for now and forever. Will you let me? What? Did you say what I think you said? You're accepting me as your partner? I asked you because I didn't want to live with the regret of not asking. I decided to be honest, expecting you to spurn me, and yet... You said yes. 
You said yes? You said... Ah, uh, right. Sorry. Whew. I almost fainted there. You're sure, though? Absolutely positive? Then I promise to do whatever it takes to be a respectable man, worthy of your partnership. With my paintings, I will bring the world happiness. The same happiness that I feel when I look at you, my beloved goddess. Sorry, was that too much? Maybe I should just leave it at this. I love you with all of my soul. You must be exhausted. It seems like our work has only increased since the war's end, doesn't it? I am afraid that will not do, Your Majesty. We are in the process of forging a new age. All of Fodlan, noble and commoner alike, is watching your every move. You cannot abandon your post now. The people would feel betrayed. Rhea imparted this role to you, and you are the only one who can fulfill it and accomplish all that must be done. Do you think anyone will permit you to shrink from this noble duty? I am sworn to help you as best I can. That sometimes requires brutal honesty. Believe me, I am just as overburdened as you. But I will not abandon this. Where you go, I follow. Yes, for whatever centuries may yet be ours, I will always remain by your side. That is why I hope you will accept this. I will just come out with it. I love you. Deeply. Will you marry me? Since I have already tied my fate to yours, I could not help but imagine how lovely it would be to exchange wedding vows with you. But there is one thing I want to make sure you understand beyond any doubt. I am not proposing to you out of a sense of duty, nor a desire to perpetuate our bloodline. I want this because I am in love with you. I cannot conceive of a world without you in it. If you feel the same, will you do me the honor of joining your life with mine? You will. Then allow me to renew my pledge. From this day forward, I will always be at your side. Through good or ill fortune. Through the greatest of joys and the worst of woes. No matter how daunting the task, I will be there. However, we must always remember our duty to the people, even if it is at the expense of our happiness. We should wait to announce our marriage until Fodlan's stability is restored. And with the thought of that day in mind, we must now return to our work. There are people waiting outside your office. Courage, my love. Let us go forth and face the world together. So falls the curtain on our time of war. Though I suppose one can never say all is over and done. You have much still to do, and I have miles to go before I achieve my own dreams. We both have many hardships in store for us, don't you think? <laughs> Indeed. Well, that talk aside, I have a bit of a proposition for you. I believe it is better to travel the path through life with someone else, rather than go forward alone. And you are indispensable to my research. No, that's not the full truth. Yes, you are indispensable to my research, but also to my life. Altogether, I mean. I haven't any idea how to treat a woman properly, and so I've long thought I would spend my life alone. But then, well, I met you, and I want to share everything with you. If you happen to feel the same way, or, 
Well, that is to say, would you accept this ring? Did I make you wait? Now, there is an unexpected development. My goodness. Well, since the feelings are mutual, I suppose there's no need to hold ourselves back any longer. Don't you agree? If so, I say we begin the next phase of our research. I wish to learn everything about you. Ready? No, no. There's no need to be ready. I'm not planning any tests. I don't want the power of your crest. I want you. First things first, I'd like to do a thorough study. And in return, perhaps you would care to learn all there is to know about me. I've never been the subject of someone else's research before, but I am open to the prospect. I can think of no one more suitable for the task than the woman I love. The future. Ah, I mean our future. It offers quite a lot to look forward to. I can't wait to see the results of this new undertaking. This place never changes. Even though Lady Rhea has withdrawn from duty and you have become the new Archbishop, the monastery that was in ruins has been rebuilt. The continent is united under its rightful king. Amidst all that change, this place stays the same. I have been considering what to do for some time, and I have chosen to remain here. Of course, I have obtained His Majesty's blessing in this. He told me I should live as I see fit. I believe this soldier's duty has come to an end. It feels lonely, yet I think it is a good thing. And remaining at the monastery does not mean severing all ties with my daughter. I fully intend to visit my wife and child whenever possible. There is one other thing. My youth may be gone, but I would like to offer you my service as a knight, if you will have me. I would choose to serve none other. The war is over. Yet there are still difficulties to face. We of the Church must join hands with the Holy Kingdom of Fargus to make a better world for all. I am unsure how much I can do for you, but I hope I can form a bridge between the Church and the Kingdom. Aside from that, I suppose I can at least teach the orphans at the monastery to fish. Oh, I nearly forgot something very important. Yes. I would like to put an end to the deception that has been my life. Your Grace, I humbly request that you call me by my true name. I am Gustav Eddie Dominic. Yes, my liege. I hereby swear my allegiance to you. Unwavering and forevermore. On my honor as a knight, I will shield you from all troubles. I swear from this day forth to protect your life and your smile. Hey, what are you doing here? Waiting for someone? Ha uh -huh. ha! You've got a knack for rib ticklers, no bones about it. We weren't planning to meet up. Anyway, things seem to have quieted down across all of Fodlan. But we can't slow down now. The work's only just begun. In fact, we'll probably be busier than ever. Agreed. I'll always be here to support you. But when we've got a little breathing room, I'd like to go fishing with you. We can sit by the water together and idly cast our lines, not a care in the world. Uh, 
<clears throat> it occurs to me, were you really waiting for someone? A little rendezvous, perhaps? Really? Well, there's something to be said for a little independence. I think it's valuable for young people to spend a few years focused on their own growth. No need to rush into finding a husband. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just... When it comes to your life, I get emotional, you know? You've... You've done so well. You've persisted through so many obstacles, and you just... kept on fighting. I have no doubt Captain Gerald's looking down proudly from heaven right now. And of course, I'm proud of you too. I'm a very proud... big brother. You could have let that one slide. <clears throat> At any rate, let's keep marching forward together. For Fodlan. For the Captain. Of course you can count on me. As long as I live, I'll be your most faithful ally. Oh, hey there. Just looking at the stars. I've been so busy I haven't had much time for that lately. I don't know what to do now anyway. With Lady Rhea gone, I feel like there's not much point in me being here anymore. I don't know. Up till now, she's all I've been living for. That's the way it's always been so I don't have any good ideas about what I ought to do next. I've got nowhere else to go, not even back to Almira. I wouldn't even know where to try and go, or what I'd do when I got there. Desire? Huh. I don't know. Only thing I ever really wanted was to serve Lady Rhea. I guess that's what I want. Someone I can help. I don't think I can live my life just for me. Do you think maybe from now on? I mean, if you'd be okay with it, I could... A ring? O okay, it's a real snug fit. But why are you giving me this? No running away. Is this a cursed ring? If I run away, I'll die? Why would you. Oh, so I can't leave this place. You really want me to stay that badly? You know what? I'm happy to stay. I'll work real hard and be super useful to you. I think it's kind of who I am, living like this, being real useful to other folks. Besides, I'll die if I try to leave, right? Actually, this ring could come off pretty easy. Nah, it gives me a reason to stay. That's the whole point, right? <laughs> Whether we stay or go, I'm sticking with you. I've gone and fallen in love, you know? To be honest, since the first day you showed up, I always did like you. I <sighs> think I can get a good night's sleep now, knowing I'll still be here tomorrow. I'm gonna head to bed. Sleep tight. Love ya! See ya in the morning! As I soared through the sky, I spoke with my mother. Tell me, is it wrong for me to be happy that I escaped death? you still say such things to me, even after witnessing my other form? Thank you. Somehow I feel as though your acceptance alone is my salvation. My sweet companion. I am entrusting the future of Fodlin to you. It is the only logical choice. 
as everyone wishes for you to be the new leader of this land. I am not qualified to continue leading the people. Though my intention was to keep the peace in Fodlan, I still propagated a false history and deceived my faithful followers. I also took advantage of my position as Archbishop to further my own selfish goal of seeing my mother again. If my foolish actions had anything to do with the war, I... I wonder... After all I have done, is it truly acceptable for me to go on living my life? You are aware that it is my fault your fate has been so cruel, are you not? You have become so strong. You and I, we were brought together by the flow of time and bound by the hands of fate. I took you on as a professor and ever since, well, I believe with all of my heart that this outcome was meant to be. Oh, perhaps it is disrespectful of me to say that. Because it gives all of the credit to time and to fate, and doesn't pay you due honor for all of the choices you made that brought us to this moment. For all that you have done, for all the joy that you have brought me, thank you. Ever since the tragedy at the Red Canyon, I have lived a solitary life. In an effort to fill the hole left by that solitude, I took up the challenge of reviving the Progenitor God. I wished for you to become the Progenitor God. I wished desperately to be held in my mother's arms once more. But that has changed. Now, I wish only for you to be yourself and to have you by my side. I love you dearly. And so, I must ask, will you accept this ring? If you feel the same, I would like nothing more than to spend the rest of my life with you. You... You brought a ring as well? For me? I am overcome with joy. I never thought I would know a day so blissful as this. That we found each other. Perhaps that means my mother is looking after us, guiding us. As the new leader of Fodlan, if you wish for this time of peace to be everlasting, well then, I will happily dedicate my life to supporting your reign. No matter what obstacles we should encounter, I believe that our bond, no, rather our love, I believe that our love can overcome all. Together, we can achieve anything. With our love, we will make Fodlin's future as bright as the stars in the sky. What is it now? You are a fool! Just standing there and acting nonchalant! Have you already forgotten about me? I also said I would always be with you! But perhaps you would have preferred it if I had vanished without a trace. <laughs> you were alone. And so I chose to come back to this world, to stay with you. Do not put on a show. You know you cannot hide your truth from me. And I must say, that you have done quite well. Of course you have. 
I chose to join our souls because I have great faith in you. And yet I must admit I did not know you would achieve so much. To think you could have died so early on. And that is all you have to say? You are impossible to stir. But all is well that ends so well. <laughs> is that not what they say? Huh? What is that thing? A ring, of course, but I must ask, for whom? I see, or no, I take it back. You are not making any sense. Could it be that my own feelings were somehow influential? But when I think about it like that, I can't help but feel that... that... that I'm so in love, I should make an eternal vow. What? Oh, I... Uh, were you... eavesdropping? Oh, fine. I shall admit, I do. I love you deeply, overwhelmingly, passionately. Ours is a love without an end. And so, I guess I shall accept that ring of yours. Indeed, it's only right, for you and I are joined within our souls. And that is much the same as marriage, don't you think? The stone within your chest is little more than decoration now. That means, it is within your very soul that I exist. And so? Whatever are you waiting for? Hmm? Ah, well, just wear it on your own finger. Our love is all that matters, not a ring. The two of us are one, for now and ever. I hope you are aware of that. In sickness and in health, and come what may, I shall be deep within your heart. I... I... love you. And I can feel the warmth of love from you as well. I know. You can no longer hide a thing from me. The day you die, I'll follow you. We shall journey as one until the end of time. <laughs> I never tire of being around you. Since we could not trade words for far too long, I have much that I wish to say to you. I know just where to start. Do you recall what we spoke of before? I had told you not to let your guard down. Honestly, I adore you, but you can be so childish. <laughs> Utterly boring. These kills are worth less than nothing to me. Are you done? Let's move on already. The war has ended, and yet this incessant swatting at flies never ceases. I have yet to claim my moments to kill you, it would seem. Yes, we will. It is all that I live for now. Funny, is it not? That we should fight toward the same end, only to vanquish one another in time. I do not quite know how to articulate these curious feelings. I think it could be described as... contentment? Perhaps it stems from discovering such a creature as you. All this time, I had determined it was the Death Knight who was drawn to you. Yet, fighting alongside you, I have come to realize that you are the only being 
who truly means anything to me. Once we exterminate the rats lurking below ground, and all of this madness is settled, once that finally happens, all of this will long be forgotten, and we shall indulge in the finer things together. Indeed, I abandoned all that I am, my true name, whatever remnants were left of my past. But now, with the chance to fight you, it is my only reason for existing. I finally understand it is you alone who can slay the demon that lives inside of me, the Death Knight. This strange feeling rising up within me. Is this what is called love? That pleases me. Let us away then, beyond these shadows that we have dwelt in for so long. To the very depths of hell, I will tumble down. You came. I'm sure you already know where this is headed. Seriously? I thought you were a little sharper than that. All right, whatever. I'll get right to it. You're the ruler of Fodlin now. That makes you the most powerful person in the world. Next to your brilliance, I'm not much more than a flightless sparrow. All I've got are my dreams, a handful of people working for me, and a pittance of gold. Well, and my undeniable charms, of course. So I've got to know. Is there any room in your bright and shining world for someone like me? <laughs> Always straight to the point with you. I should know that by now. Well, here we go then. I want you to take this. Consider it my token of thanks. A repayment for all you've done for me. If that makes you smile. Forgotten, have you? Well, I suppose it has been five years after all. You backed me up when I needed some help, even though I wouldn't admit it. Bit of a turf war, if you recall. I always repay what's owed. It's how I sleep at night. But if you really don't need it, I've got another idea. Maybe it's more of an agreement. In return for this ring, I ask for you. This seems a rather cruel way to treat someone coming to you with his heart in his hands, don't you think? I used to feel like saving the life of even one person who needed it would be enough. But I've set my sights even higher. A future in which nobody has to die from something as awful as poverty. I know it's a dream worth reaching for, however grand it might be. And you are truly special. I feel like together that dream could be made a reality. It may never happen, but it's important to try. Anyway, I'm just a person like anyone. I'll die just like anyone. Whenever that happens, someone will have to take over as boss. I've got that all lined up already. And so long as my people keep living with the same tenacity I've taught them, I've no doubt my dream will live on, whether or not I'm around to see to it. My name might fade into the dust, but my dream will remain. For the longest time, that was more than enough. But now I've come to want something else. When I go, I want someone around to write my name in my old notebook. I can't see anyone else more suited to the task than you. What's wrong? Did I say something strange? I just want to make sure things are set up properly. You never know when it'll be my time. <laughs> I suppose I did just talk a fair bit about death during a proposal, didn't I? 
Normally, I'm much more charming. I think you get it anyway. So, will you accept my offer? Yeah? Something else you want? Well, you certainly don't forget, huh? I've always kept it private out of necessity. Couldn't have such a secret being spread around, after all. If there's anyone I'll tell, it's you. Listen closely now. Hey, you! We need to talk. Now. You did it for me, didn't you? Without even taking credit for it. Admit it, pal. You asked Claude to protect the people of Kupala. Relations between Fodland and Almira are downright friendly now. Those mountains will be prime real estate. They needed this. Sure, sure. But you know, saving those folks was my gig, not yours. Now that the war's over... <sighs> I'll just spit it out. I was starting to get excited about fighting that fight. Guess you could say I was disappointed to find you'd beaten me to the punch. But what matters is results, so... Thank you. There. I said it. Won't say it again. There's still a lot to figure out. The road ahead won't be easy. But this was a giant leap forward. Right. There's, uh... One more thing I need to get off my chest. Ugh. I'm a mess. I wasn't planning on doing this just yet, but you forced my hand. I was gonna wait until I had figured out a way to ensure Kupala's safety first. Guess that excuse is out the window. So now, it's time to take the biggest gamble of my life. I prepared for the worst. Expecting it, really. You, uh, uh, uh I, uh, marry me, pal! Look, I know it's a big ask. I'm beefy, but that aside, I'm not the most eligible bachelor on the block. But I promise to become... better. Not so selfish and careless. I want to support you, make you happy. The life I live makes me comfortable, but... Comfort be damned! I need you by my side. Always. If I'm not good enough now, just give me time. A year, maybe. Two years. Five tops. You do? I knew it! That seals the deal then, yeah? Let's get hitched right away! I know a guy! Couldn't have said it better myself! Guess a lavish party is in order now! We have a lot to do! Ah, speaking of lavish... I know, I need to sort out my finances. We'll need a house, and all that good stuff. <clears throat> no need to decide now, my love. Let's just focus on this being happy business. The rest will work itself out. It feels like a lifetime ago. But remember when you told me you'd protect me? At the time, I had no idea how to take it. I wasn't sure I could bear letting someone else look after me. I was sure that in the end, I'd be the one protecting you. That I'd be the strong one. That's how it's always been for me. Guess I was wrong. <laughs> Suppose so. In the end, we protected each other. To join our strength. To look after you. And be brave enough to let you look after me. That's what marriage is all about, right? Being with you is so natural it must be fate. But, you know, if fate were a thing. <laughs> that is. From now on, we'll keep looking out for each other. You can bet on it. 